Welcome back to the last part of the lecture number four. In this last part, we want to look at spanning sets. So the definition is written here, and let me just walk you through the definition. So you have a collection of vectors. If v1 through vb are a collection of vectors in Rn, the subset of Rn spanned by those vectors is the following set. So on the left hand is the way that we're going to define our set. So the span of v1 through vp is a shorthand for the, uh, the collection of elements on the second side. Now the vectors on the second side are c1 times the first vector plus c2 times the second vector up to cp times the last vector, where the c1 through cp are uh, elements of r. So notice that the element, a particular element inside of here, go back, is a linear combination. So in particular, the span contains all linear combinations of V1 through Vp, not just one, but all of them. So that's the, the main idea of a spanning set, is you have a collection of vectors and you form all possible linear combinations, right? So all linear combinations of the given vectors that you start with. Okay. So let me give you a couple examples that will hopefully kind of help you build your intuition here. So the first one is just kind of a, give you an example of something belonging to a span. So minus 311 belongs to the span of the two vectors, six minus one comma minus three, four. Okay, and why does it belong? Well, we actually showed this a little earlier that we can write minus 311 as a linear combination of these two vectors. And here, I'm just repeating what we discovered earlier. Then one times the first vector and plus three times the second vector gives us minus 311. And since the span of these two vectors contains all linear combinations, it will contain the vector minus 311. The next example shows us that no span is ever going to be empty. So for any collection of vertices, V1 through Vp in Rn, we have that the zero vector always belongs to V1 through Vp, okay? And why is that? Well, it's because zero can always be written as a linear combination of any collection of vertices, uh, uh, of vectors, right? Because you can write the zero vector as zero times the first vector plus zero times the second vector all the way up to zero times the last vector. So no span is ever empty. It always contains at least a ve uh, zero vector. And in fact, we can say a little bit more, and this kind of ties to what we were talking at the beginning, that the span of V1 up to Vp contains all scalar multiples of any particular vector Vi. And why is that? Well, that's because C times that vector, you can rewrite it as zero times the first vector up to C times the vector Vi and zero times the last vector. So in other words, you put all the weights to zero except for the weight in front of Vi. So the span of any collection of vectors contains all scalar multiples of each of the VIs, but then it also contains more. It also contains all the possible sums of all those vectors. Okay. Now, as we saw earlier, when we introduced sums and scale, uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication, in some cases we can talk about the geometric interpretation of what's going on. So here, let me just give you kind of a glimpse of what's happening when we think of geom vectors inside of R3. So we talked about that. So we have 
two vectors in R3, and in this case, you can think of a vector as a three tuple, and it's a line going from the origin to the endpoint described by your vector. So what would the span of a particular vector U be? Well, this is going, this here, right? You can't see where I'm referring to. This right here is all scalar multiples of, C, of the vector U. And what that's doing is it's describing a line in R3 through the origin and the vector R3. Let's go back a couple slides here. You can kind of see why this is true, because if we took the vector 2, 1, and we take all scalar multiples of it, we would be describing this whole line. But taking all scalar multiples of a single vector would be the equivalent of describing the span of a, of a fixed one vector. Okay, so that's what's kind of what's happening if your span only contains one element. In the second case, still thinking in R3, if V is not a multiple of the vector U, that, so that means that V does not lie on the line described by U, then the span of U and V is the plane in R3 through U and V. So I'm going to make a, an attempt of drawing this. Let's see how this goes. So I have my axes, X, Y, and Z. Let's use green to represent my uh, uh, vector. So my vector 2, 0, 0 is right here in green. Hopefully you can see that. And the vector 1, 1, negative 1 would be, here is 1 uh, in the X coordinate, 1 in the Y coordinate, and somewhere down here would be my vector V. 1, 1, minus 1. So let me just add some more lines here so we can see this is the negative, this is the negative direction. And I'll make a green line down here, right there. And let me try to draw the plane through these two vectors. It would look something like something like that. It's not the best drawing, but hopefully you get the idea of what's going on. So spans of lines, and, or spans of many vectors, obviously would include an infinite number of elements. And But when you draw them, they'll be like a line or a plane. And now you should start thinking about what it geometrically it would look like in R4 or R5, if you can visualize that. It does get a little tricky about what happens when you do Rn. So the next fact here is really just kind of putting all the pieces to get of today's lecture kind of in one fact, okay? So, and tying it to what we've seen so far. So let's say we now ha want, to, uh, we have a collection of vectors and we can talk about the span of those vectors. So that is uh, all linear combinations of V1 and VP. And, Many times we want to actually determine if a vector v belongs to the span, right? So if we were to go to back to my picture here, we may want to ask, here's a vector, does it belong in the plane? Well, what that means is to check if v belongs into the span means that you should be able to find, write b as a linear combination of your vectors v1 through vp. But we saw earlier in today's lecture that this is actually equivalent to finding a solution to this particular matrix, okay, in the augmented form, where the vectors vi form the columns and the bi's correspond to what you want it to be equal to. So many of the things today that you have seen before, but what we're doing, the new part is describing new language to describe what we're doing. Okay, so normally we are interested in finding solutions, but you could think about it as solving uh, linear equations, and a vector equation, which is also the same thing as asking if a particular element belongs to the span. So a bunch of key ideas to take away from today's lecture. You should know what a vector is at the end of today's class. You should know what a vector sum is. You should also know what scalar multiplication means. And the other big terms that we learned today are linear combinations, 
of vectors and also the span. So that is it for lecture four, and I look forward to talking to you in lecture five.